blessings to you. Can you come worship with me? Can you worship with me? Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord before we hear, before we begin to talk. Let's worship a little bit. Let's begin to put a demand on the anointing that I'm calling upon the God who's our deliverer. Hallelujah. For him to touch us. That even before we get the word, that we prepare our hearts and that we are ready to receive. Come on, just begin to just begin to be ready in receiving mode. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God. And one thing I can tell you about the presence of God, it moves beyond the airways. Come on here. Can I tell you, I don't have to touch you. Can I, I, I even, even fear God, even that there's such a, a, a prophetic anointing that even I hear God say, even that I'm regulating heartbeats, even for people who've been dealing with heart palpitations, I even hear God say, even that he's regulating even minds. He's regulating minds when people being confused. He's bringing clarity to the hearts of God's people. You, you got to know that God is a God. He's a healer. And there's one thing he can heal you. And you don't even know that he's healing you. I even got here, even as a word of knowledge, that whoever may be listening to this, God said that even the person that's been having headaches, God said that even that he's healing headaches tonight. Come on. He's healing headaches. Come on. I hear God say to tell you to stop worry, but to worship him. He says, stop worrying and blessings to you. And he say, and to worship him. We got to know how to put a demand on the Holy Spirit. Come on. We got to know how to become open and say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for a move of God. Can I tell you God can heal and you don't have to be in a church? Can I tell you we are the church? And this is the season where God is going to do the miraculous. God is going to do all kind of miracles. He's going to do all kind of unorthodox things. But he wants the people to put a demand on him. Can you put a demand, bless his mother. Can you put a demand on the spirit of God that whatever that you need, you say, God, I thank you for it. Come on, can you begin to walk in that realm? Can you walk in that place in the realm of the spirit to say, you know what? I'm not waiting on my feelings. I'm not waiting on my emotions, but I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. We have got that sick woman of God. We have got such a place that people got to hype us up and we think that we got to be at church. But God said, I'm looking for some people that are ready and just hungry for me. Come on. I, I mean, I just feel the presence of God and my, my hands are getting hot. And you know what? And there's healing. There's healing in the atmosphere. And y'all know normally I normally start off with teaching. But you know what? I just feel that God wants to do something. He wants to do something something for his people and that you know what he wants to heal you but the people got to have a heart to want to be healed the people got to have a mind to want to be healed come on this is where you lay down your problems you lay down what you're dealing with and say god i'm making you bigger i choose to make you bigger come on god i choose to make you bigger and i take my eyes off the devil and i put my eyes on you come on put a demand on god he said that his people believe that's why why we're called believers because we believe come on what man says is impossible we gotta believe it's possible through our god i begin to share with the church on tuesday isaiah 43 god said that he would be a real he would make a river in the midst of a desert i don't think y'all heard me he said i would be a river in the midst of a desert you know what he's saying that in the midst of your dry places in the midst of you going through in the midst of you frustrated in the midst of you disappointed in the midst of you feeling like god i don't know what's going on he said i will be a river in other words he said i will break through for you he said i will make a way out of no way for you but he's looking for his people to put a demand on him and not only put a demand on it but hold on to it hold on to it even when things in life try to make it seem like what god said is a liar but this is where you got to hold on and say god i'm holding on to your promises this is where you say god i'm holding on to your word come on here he said when god come back when jesus come back will he find faith on the earth will he find you believing when he find you still holding on to the promise when you say i've been waiting and it seemed like god forgot about me but can you still believe can you still trust in him because see this is what god is wanting to do he wants us to be glory carriers do you not know you carry 
the glory. You carry the un, the undetangible presence of the Lord on the inside of you. And you got to know what we got to know how to carry ourselves. This is why I do deliver me from me because we got to prepare yourself. You are a church and you are a glory carrier. You carry the glory of the Lord. And this is why we got to get our minds right. This is why we got to get our soul healed. This is why we got to get delivered. This is why we got to see ourselves the way that he see us. Because if you are hurt, you're wounded. Guess what? You won't see yourself how he see you. You won't see yourself like a glory carrier and this is why blessings to you and this is why you got to understand God saying my people got to get their mind right, you got to get your soul right, you got to know that you are the glory you are a glory carrier and you carry the glory, you carry the cabal, come on here, do you know wherever you carry the cabal every demonic spirit gotta go do you not know if you begin to carry yourself as a glory carrier do you not know that you are begin to cause healing to break out can I tell you can I prophesy God want to raise up some glory carriers that you go into the Walmart you go into the Piggly Wiggly and you go into the mall and people begin to feel the presence of God this is where God want to heal our mind he want to heal our soul so that you can believe that God want to use you because see the devil been telling us that because you won't did this can I tell you Rahab was a prostitute, but God used her. Can I tell you Noah was a drunk, but God used him. Can I tell you regardless of what you went through, regardless of what happened to you, God want to use you. This is why he wants to heal you. You got to let him heal your mind. You got to let him heal your soul. You got to begin to say, God, I'm open. Come on, can you open up? Can you open up yourself to where you allow God to come in? I hear God. God say, take me to that place where you're wounded at. Take me to that place where you can't tell nobody where you hurt at. Take me to that place where you've been holding back, where you didn't want nobody to know what happened to you, where you didn't want to talk about it. Can you take him to that place? Can I tell you the, the glory of the Lord is here tonight. The glory of the Lord, he's moving by his spirit. Even I hear shackles breaking. I see chains breaking. I hear God say, I'm taking the limitations off for you. I heard God say, I'm taking the restrictions off of you. Even woman of God, Teresa Stevenson, I hear God say, I'm taking the limitations off of you. He said the limitations that man and limitations that you put on yourself. God said, I'm taking off the restrictions. He said, I'm taking off the limitations. Even I hear God say, I'm breaking you out of the box. He said, I'm breaking you out of the box because there was some area where man tried to put you in. And God said, I'm calling the healing to take place. He said, I'm taking you back. Even something that happened five years ago go. And God said, I'm bringing healing to that thing. I'm bringing healing to that thing. Where man tried to box you in and to try to tell you this is the way it's going to be. God said today, he said, I set you free. I set you free. God said, I'm calling you to open up your mouth and begin to praise me. He said, woman of God, begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to prophesy. Begin to speak to situations in your household. He said, speak to the storm. He said, I I am the God that will make a way out of no way. He said, and I'm stretching you. He said, I got you uncomfortable. He said, the devil been telling you that you've been in this situation because I don't care and I don't love you. He said, but I got you. He said, because I know that I can trust you. And he said, I know that you're going to believe my word and that you're going to speak my word and that you're going to watch me move. He said, watch me move. He said, open up my, open up your mouth and speak my word and watch me move. God said, I've been bragging on you. That's why you've been going through hell. That's why you were like, what is going on? You got to understand God been bragging on you. He said, go back to the uh, Job. How God told Satan, why don't you try my servant Job? I hear God say that I've been bragging on you. You got to understand. Handle the Boshaya, Rabbi Sheket of Osak, woman of God, Nicole. I hear God say, healing is your portion. He say, healing is your portion. He said, I'm dealing with some things. He said, and I'm going to go deep. I'm going to go deep in some areas. And he said, I want you to cry out to me. He said, I 
I want you to give it to me. He said that even where some words that was said, some things that was done, but God said this day, he said, I'm bringing healing to your heart. I'm bringing healing to your soul. He said that even though when people left you for dead, they left you for dead and they said that it was over for you, but God said, not so, not so. God said, I am making a way. God said, I'm pulling the, the stones back. I see two stones. He said, I'm pulling the stones back. He said, and I'm making you over. He said, I'm making you over. He said, I'm cutting off all the dead weight. He said, because you've been carrying pressure and you've been carrying other people. He said, but behold, I'm going to do something new. And he said, and it's springing forth. He said, so I'm calling healing to touch. I even see healing in your heart. I see healing in your abdominal area. God said, I'm dealing with some things. He said, and I'm shedding off the dead weight. I'm shedding off the dead weight. He said, I'm going to cause you to begin to see some people for who they really are. He said, even I'm going to reawaken you in the night season. He said, I'm going to take you deeper. I'm going to take you deeper in the prophetic. He said, I'm going to allow you to see some things. He said, because it's some things that you got to see. It's some things that you got to understand. He said, because I'm going to allow you to, put, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put some things together and I want you to see it. I want you to see what I am doing. He said, so it looked funny. He said, but just know that my hand is upon you. He said, just know. And he said, and I'm bringing healing to your eyes because you have saw some things. You have saw some things to, 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 to break you. He said, but you know what? He said, but he told the devil not so. He said, he told the devil not so. He can't kill you. He can't kill you. God said, this is the anointing that he's putting on you. He said, even, and I'm giving you a word for women. He said, even the, everything that you went through, it wasn't because of something that you have done. He said, it's because, you know what? Because you're going to say what God brought me out. You're going to be able to reach these other women. You're going to be able to talk to them with realness. You're going to be able to be true to them. You're going to be able to talk to them about this hurt and this pain, about going through. And God God said, you know what? It's because I can trust you. He said, even I want you to begin to journal. He said, I want you to journal. And he said, there are some things I want you to let go. There are some people I want you to let go. He said that even though it's hard, but I want you to let go. He said, because this is where I got a place where that I need you to go, that you won't be moved. You won't be moving. He said, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. He said, because I am your defense. I am your defense. I hear the Lord say, Elder Carla, this is a season that he's going to give you the anointing of the scribe. He's going to give you the anointing to write another book. You're going to write another book even to, even about your experience, even as a single woman and to marriage. And God said that you're going to begin to release a lot of wisdom to some women. And he said, and this is a season, and I begin to call you, I begin to call you to steal away. He said, as you steal away, as you steal away, he said, I'm going to pour some things into you. He said, I'm going to give you some things that nobody even told you. He said, I'm going to take you on the ride of the Holy, I'm going to take you into the school of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to say, you know what, uh, God, I just been married, you know, a short time, but God said, you know what? He said, I'm redeeming the time. And he said, I'm pouring some new oil. I'm pouring some new oil upon you. And this is a fresh oil. And he said, and I'm opening up your understanding. He said, I'm opening up revelation that you will begin to articulate what I'm saying to you. And you will be able to share with other people. And he said that this book would be, it, 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 it's going to be such a blessing in the kingdom of God. And God said, I'm anointing your voice. I'm anointing your voice. I don't know if you sing, but I actually see you singing. And I actually see you uh, speaking, and I hear him say that he's amplifying your voice. He's amplifying your voice, and that your voice will be heard. He said, even the anointing that I'm putting on you, that you will not just be limited to the black church. He said, but I'm causing you to go out. I'm causing you to go out. I even hear God say, a marketplace anointing, a marketplace anointing. He said that I'm going to call you, that you're going to go out and about. I just see you out on the streets, 
and God is going to, there's going to be a drawing, a drawing of people to you. And it's just like, not just like in a, a, a normal um, platform of just having a church setting, but I just see you out in the streets and I just see people drawn to you. And I see that you helping people. But he said that this is a marketplace anointing. Even Elder Moore, I hear God say that this is a season that he's bringing unity. He's bringing unity. He said, and also I'm amplifying your voice. I'm amplifying your voice. He said that even I'm taking your intercession to another. He said, I'm going to deal with you even the more throughout the night season. He said that even though the pains, the some of the pains that you've been enduring in your body, God said that even that it's already done. God said that healing is your portion. There is a healing taking place in your hands, Elder Moore. He said that you're going to lay hands even in the grocery store. God said, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, and he's releasing a healing mantle. You already got it, but it's going to be on a greater level. You're going to find yourself that even as you get to go out into the marketplace, God is going to use you. You're going to be in the store, and, and you know, he's going to tell you to start praying for people. You're going to start giving people word. God said, even too, I'm doing something in your family. I'm doing something in your family. He said that I have heard your prayers. I have heard your prayers. And God said, I'm saving them loved ones. I'm saving them loved ones, them ones that have been dear on your heart. God said, I got them in the palm of my hand. And God said, I am with you, woman of God. He said, I'm with you. He said, but I'm going to reveal my secrets to you, even in prayer. He said, I'm going to deal, I'm going to deal with you more in the night season. He said, also, I'm going to cause you to start journaling also. You're going to start writing. Start writing in your journal if you don't already do so. And he said, I'm going to call some things, some things that you forgot about. He said, I'm bringing those things to the top because there are some things that I need you to deal with. There are some things that I need you to bring break off and he said that this is a season that I'm causing you to come higher my daughter come higher come in the bed chamber come in the bed chamber so father we thank you Lord we thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah even evangelist Brooks I hear the Lord say that even there's such a healing taking place even in your body. God said that I'm causing healing. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He said, I'm bringing healing to your heart. I'm bringing healing to your mind. He said that even to some things that you didn't want to talk about, some things that was difficult for you, but God said, I'm causing a greater grace to be released upon you. God said, I'm causing things that you did not understand. He said, I'm unlocking mysteries. He said, I'm causing things to be unlocked and some pieces are going to come together for you. He said, even too, he said, even I'm opening up your mouth. And as you begin to speak, he said, I'm going to give you words for my people and you're going to speak what thus says the Lord. He said that even that you're going to speak it with boldness, you're going to speak it with authority. Even God said, I even see you laying hands on your grandchildren. I see you laying hands on your seed. God said that even though I see a I see a spiritual inheritance that you have laid up for your family. I see a spiritual inheritance. I see your grand, your children, children, children. God said that even that he's going to honor them. And I just see the anointing that's upon you resting upon them. And God said, I'm causing you to believe for even more. He said, take the restrictions off of me. Take the limitations off of me. And he said, I want you to trust me. He said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. He said, I'm giving you a boldness. And I'm giving you authority that you're going to be able to speak. He said, even I'm breaking, um, um, timid, uh, where well, you've been timid a little bit. He said, I'm going to break it off of you. And they're going to say, what in the world wrong with her? Because God said, because I'm giving you a boldness and I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you a confidence of knowing that I am with you. And he said, and when you know that I am with you, he said, that's your assurance. That's your guarantee. He said that even too, he said, I'm opening up a platform. I'm going to open up a platform that you're going to begin to talk to women. You're going to even begin to share with them some 
things that you went through and that you're going to begin to unlock them. You're going to begin to unlock them because even some things that you did not want to share, but God said that even at the appointed time, you're going to begin to share and you're going to begin to help other people. He said, because you overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. And he said, so your testimony, I'm, he's amplified. He said, I'm amplifying it and I'm giving you some new oil. He said, I'm giving you new oil. Even you're going to smell a new fragrance. He said, I'm also taking your prayer life to another dimension. He said that even I'm opening you up. I'm opening you up. Even I even impartation. God is giving you an impartation that he's sharpening your discernment that you will begin to smell. You will begin to know the difference between what's good and what's evil. Because God said, because I'm drawing you closer. I'm drawing you closer to me. He said, this is a place where I'm saying, come higher, my daughter. Come higher, my daughter. Even Shonda, I hear the Lord say, even for you. He said, I am strengthening you. I am strengthening you. He said that even though where the enemy wanted to put you in the box, God said, I break you out the box this day. He said, and I'm causing a strength and I'm causing a courage to break out on the inside of you. He said, and I'm causing a love that you will begin to feel the Father love upon you. He said, I'm pouring my oil on that hurt. I'm pouring my oil on those areas where you where you was hurt at. And he said, and I'm pouring oil. He said, I'm pouring oil on those areas and those all represents his presence he said and i'm bringing healing to you he said i'm bringing healing to your heart even i hear god say even words that were spoken in your ears where the enemy keep trying to bring it back to your remembrance god said this day i break every shackle and i break every chain where the enemy has spoken to you to try to tell you who you are but god said this day i'm cleansing your ears that you will hear my voice and the voice of a stranger you would not follow he said but i'm calling a supernatural your strength to come on the inside of you that he said I want you to come on and press in my daughter he said it's time for you to come higher it's time for you to come higher he said even though I want you to worry about you he said I want you to fight for you he said I want you to press in for you he said because I'm calling you in deeper come on deeper come on deeper my daughter come on deeper my daughter he said I want you to come in deeper even me um, Annette Williams, I hear God say that he's doing something. I just see knees. I see your, I see knees and legs. I see knees and legs. I see that God is doing something with your knees and doing something with your legs. I even see some type of healing um, taking place with your, with your legs and with your knees. And Father, I thank you right now that you will begin to strengthen your daughter. Oh, Father, I thank you, oh God, that you will begin. We rebuke every assignment of the enemy. And Father, I thank you right now oh God, that you strengthen her to stand, not just to stand on her natural legs, but to stand in the realm of the spirit. Father, I thank you, oh God, that even where the enemy have come to knock her down through opposition, come to knock her down, oh God, through infirmity. And Father, I thank you that you will begin to strengthen your daughter, that she will begin to stand and that she will not be moved. Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that you cause her faith, you cause her faith to arise like never before. Father, I, I even hear God said that even he's going to visit you. Um, Annette Williams, he's going to visit you. That even as you could, he said he wants you to begin to press in at a place of worship. Because as you press in, in a, into a place of worship, God said that I'm going to come and I'm going to sit with you. He said, I'm going to sit and I'm going to dine with you. Just how the presence and the glory of the Lord be at God said, I'm going to sit and, 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 and me and you are going to dine together. He go, we're going to sit together. And he said, this is a place where I'm calling you, where it's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's just me and you where you're not going to worry. You're not going to stress. He said, I'm going to teach you how to focus on me and not on what you're dealing with. He said, because this is a place where I'm calling you to come higher, to come in the bed chamber. He said, because my hand is upon you, my daughter. And he said, and I want to let you know, I love you. He said, I love you regardless of what the enemy try to tell you, regardless of situations. God said, I love you with an everlasting love, a love that you would never 
never understand. God said, I love you. And he said, I break, I'm breaking the back of the enemy. He said, I'm breaking the lies, the lies that he have told you, the lies that he tried to told you that God forgot about you and that God is not with you. He said, I want to let you know that I am with you, my daughter. He said, I want to let you know I'm with you. And he said, and you got to trust in me, trust in me, trust in me, trust in me, even though it seemed a little rocky, but you got to say, you know what, God, on everything. He said in his word, everything is going down but his word. And you got to understand that God needs you to trust him. He said, trust him, my daughter. Even um, uh, uh, Karina, I hear the Lord say that my hand is upon you, daughter. He said that even I'm shielding you from all harm and danger. He said even the darts that the enemy try to throw at you, where people would try to pull you out of him. But God said that my hand is upon you. He said that even he's releasing Psalms 91 upon you, my daughter. He said that even though, he said that, he said, I got you covered in my wings of protection. That even though they try to plot and plan. And God said that even too, he said, even though I want you to be careful, it's somebody that's pretending that they're for you. And God said that they're not a friend, but they are foe. God said, I'm causing your eyes to come open. He said, because you've been listening. You have you have some type of feeling, but you're just shaking it off. God said, you cannot be moved by what you see in the natural. He said, but you got to listen to what I'm showing you. He said, this is a season that I'm sharpening your discernment. I'm letting you know that those that are for you and those that are against you. He said, but this person here, they're on assignment in your life. They're on assignment to try to pull you back. They're on assignment and they're coming with familiar things. And God said that you're going to know who it is because when you look at them in the natural, it looks like they love you. But if you watch what they do, stuff that you told them you don't do anymore, it's like they're going to try to bring this stuff up to you. And that's going to be your indication to let you know who they are. And God said, because you can't trust them. He said they are not a friend, but they are a foe. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God for him wanting to speak. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you for you sealing every word, every word with your blood in the name of Jesus. And so as we continue to go on and as we shift um, to the part of a uh, what we're going to talk about today we're talking about the hurt the damage and the broken person the hurt the damage and the broken person and i believe that's why god was moving the way that he wanted to move because sometimes we do not understand that if you're hurt if you're damaged if you're broken that stops God from doing what he needs to do in our lives. And he can't use us if we're broken. He can't use us if we're hurt, if we're wounded. Why? Because he lives within us. Because those things that will have happened to us, they're going to speak louder than God. And sometimes since you're so used to being stuck at what happened to you, you would drown out God's voice and those voices would speak louder. Sometimes people don't even understand blessings to you, prophetess. Some people don't, um, hallelujah. Even to um, uh, prophetess, I hear God say too, also too, he said that you would not, he told me to remind you back of a prophecy of before. He said that even too, he's going to cause WWT that you would not be stagnated, but you're going to be mobile. You're, you will not be stagnated, but you're going to be mobile. He said, well, he's opening up, um, he's opening up new relationships. He's opening up even with different types of denominations, different types of, um, races of people where it would not be limited to what you see. But God said that I'm breaking and I'm tearing down the walls. He said, where well, it would not be limited into a certain way. He said, but I'm going to give you new things. New things are going to spring forth. He said, even I see you even going back to the drawing board on some things that you're going to critique, um, that it won't just be the same, like how it may be one way at this place. It may be something totally different. He said, because if you go to the different places, he said, I'm going to give you the anointing that you're going to be able to discern what those women in that particular area need because everybody needs different stuff. And he said, and I'm going to put a burden on your heart what's needed in that area. And he said, I'm going to cause different doors to open for you. Even I hear God say different avenues, different places. He said, so even don't even 
because I know you don't just do it in churches. He said, but even I'm just taking you out of the box. I'm taking you out of the box. And, and, and God said, I'm taking you into the marketplace. I'm taking you into the marketplace. He said, because even with some things, you got some people um, that are in um, that are in the world or uh, in the world system that they they need to see what you're saying. They need to see and they need to hear what you're saying. And he said, and so that's why I'm breaking the box so you would not be limited to a, a, a type of not a I don't, I don't want to say church anointing, but it won't just be like it, it, it's going to be different. Like he may give it to you to do just like somebody do family day in the park. It may be WWT day in the park. And, you know, and he may tell you, go out and get everyone roses. I, I don't know, but I just know he's saying that it's not going to be different. And I just see that there's a breaking of the four walls. That it, It's like you cannot be contained. He said it cannot be contained. He said, I never called it to be contained. He said, so I'm going to, and I see you with a book. And he said, so I'm taking you back to the book that uh, you wrote about WWT. And he said, it's going to, um, it's some new things that he's giving you. He's giving you a new understanding of some things that he want to do. And he said, so uh, prepare your heart so when I wake you up in the night season. He said, because there are some things that I want to show you. And there are some doors and some people uh, that I want you to deal with. And he said, so when you go to the people, they're going to willingly open up their doors. Because he may say, well, why are you doing it there? Because it's something that God said, it's what I want to do. He said, because salvation, salvation. He said, even when you do this, it's going to do, you're going to be like, doing the work of an evangelist. It's going to be causing souls to get saved. He even said, because even in the midst of uh, um, you doing what you're doing, people are going to get saved when they come and they find out, oh, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, I want the Lord to come into my heart. They're, they're going to find out who Jesus is, and that's why he said, I'm breaking you out the box and that you will not be contained within the church, um, the church walls in the church setting. But I'm taking you out to the secular arena. I'm taking you out into the, the outdoors where it's going to save people. It's going to draw people who don't know me. Amen. And so um, as we're talking about, I'm sorry, I'm, going, I'm sorry. <laughs> when I saw her name, I heard him start speaking. Um, but again, the goal of the enemy is to stop us from loving ourselves, from dealing with self-love. And it's one thing I can say, even been doing Deliver Me For Me for two years, very few people want to work on themselves to actually want to deal with themselves. Sometimes people want quick and fast uh, somebody to touch them and can God heal you like that? Yes. But you got to understand some things is a process and the things that are processed, we got to learn how to unlearn some things and we got to learn how to face some things because some things that we're not facing and some things that we don't know those still those things are still holding us in bondage because we did not know. I can tell you myself, there were some things in my life, I even though I uh, had a deliverance mantle on my life, but certain things I was not delivered from because I did not um, surround myself with people who was doing deliverance in that way. I only limited to a certain way, and there were some things in my life that God had to do in me, and once he did it in me, he began to heal me in them areas, and so it began to help me in just not my, re my regular everyday life. It just um, not just want to be a good pastor, but it made me want to be a better person. It made me want to be a better mother, a better wife, a better daughter. And so sometimes we want to do things because we want to become good in ministry, but God is looking for us to get healed so that we can have healthier families. We can have healthier marriages. We can be healthier parents and siblings and brothers and sisters. And so we got to begin to first start learning how to love ourselves. But see, the job of the enemy is to get us stuck at whatever happened to us. Because if he got you stuck at whatever happened to you, guess what? He's changing your DNA. He's changing the identity that God has for you. And so now you got the identity of a victim. You got the identity of you know what nope don't nobody want to be with me or this is over for me and God is saying that you got a that's a, a, a image and that's a title that you're holding on to that God said I never called for you to do that he said but this is where I want you to begin to dig in why why you are why are you the way that you are how come it's comfortable for us to be hurt how come we're so comfortable being at a place where we're dealing with rejection we're bitter we walking in rage we operating in unforgiveness how is it that we're so comfortable 
like this when we don't even begin to question the thoughts that are in our mind, not understanding because we understand that the thoughts that are in our mind, we assume that our thoughts are right. We assume that our thoughts are in a good place because we judge ourselves according to ourselves, but not understanding we're supposed to judge ourselves according to the word. And this is where you got to look at your thoughts for real. When you say, I love myself, because see, we got to go beyond and say, I love myself. It's bigger than you getting your hair done. I love myself. It's bigger than me getting my nails done. I love myself. It's me bigger than me wearing a new dress or putting on a new wig. I love myself is when I'm willing to deal with my pain. What causes me to, what causes me to cry at night? What causes me not to want to look in the mirror? What causes me that I give up on myself, that I call myself ugly and I say that I'm not good enough and I say that I'm not smart. See, this is the thing that God is saying. This is what I want to deal with because see, it's easy to fix the outside, but this is where we got to be willing to deal with the inside, but you first got to be willing to check your thoughts. You got to question your thoughts and understand, are my thoughts healthy or are my thoughts unhealthy? Are my thoughts toxic? You got to begin to be honest with yourself so you cussing people out and you sitting up there, I can't do this, this too much. You got to be honest with yourself. You are still hurt, you're still broken, and you're still damaged because when you open up your mouth, that's what comes out of your mouth. The Bible these things, but then yet we will still do the same thing. It's in this when you know that the enemy wants to put you in a box because he knows that you know the word, but something on the inside will pull you back. And this is where you got to understand it's rooted in the hurt. It's rooted in the brokenness and it's rooted in being damaged. So this is where you got to honestly pay attention to your thoughts. You got to turn the music off and listen. What do you say about you? What comes in your mind? I can't do that. I can't afford that. Where is that coming from? Because God said, that's not what I told you. He said, that's not what I taught you as a parent. And so if, if that's not what I taught you, where did you get that kind of thinking at? Well, I don't qualify for the job. No, I can't talk in front of people. No, I, I can't afford that. Where did that come from? Because if God is your God, we are supposed to look at things the way that he sees it. We are supposed to talk the way that he sees it. Is this going to be hard? Yes. But you got to understand you are anointed for this. You are anointed and you got an anointing on your life and just because you've been comparing yourself to other people and God said that's what we still damage at because we're looking at other people. We're looking at other women and we're sizing ourselves up and we're looking at it in a negative connotation and we're not looking at it from a healthy way but we're looking at it being jealous and envious instead of getting you some help. Instead of saying you know what I need somebody to talk to. I need somebody to show me how to be a woman. Show Show me how to love myself. Show me how to deal with my issues. Show me how to deal with these hurts that I hear these voices when I get ready to go to bed. Show me how to walk alone and know that it's okay that I'm alone. Show me that you know I can take my own self out to eat. Show me that I can buy my own house. I can buy my own car. That I don't have to wait till a man to come in my life. I don't have to wait till a woman to come in my life. This is where we got to begin to say, God, I need you to help me because I'm hurt, I'm damaged, and I'm broken. What is the definition for broken? It's where you have been fractured or damaged. You're no longer in one piece anymore. You're no longer in a working condition. It's where now you have been broken based on what has happened to you. And so what has happened is you got to understand the enemy will put people in your life, whether or not it's a family relationship, an intimate relationship, a co-worker, church members. Uh, you got to understand the enemy will put people in your life and he will have them to speak ugly things about you, against you. And so when you listen to what they say about you, you begin to come into agreement and you come in into agreement with being broken. So if they said that you're ugly, they said that you're not smart enough, they saying that you can't do this, you got to understand that those people have been on assignment from hell and too long we've been comfortable with these people being in our life because some of them are family members, some of them are friends. We've been knowing them from elementary school, but yeah, but to, I'm tired of you calling me a B, I'm tired of you calling you, I'm tired of you calling me 
a helper. I'm tired of you telling me I'm like my no good daddy. I'm like my no good. No, 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 no. You got to begin to understand that's brokenness. And see, a lot of times our families have taught us how to be broken. And so when we watch broken, we observe as little children how to be broken. And so now as an adult, you begin to duplicate what you've been watched. And so now here it is. You know how to be hurt. You know how to be damaged. You know how to be broken, but you don't know how to be whole. Here it is where we have a hard time because we don't want to deal with these inner things, these inner things that's going on. So when people say things to us, it damages us. It makes us feel like what they said is true. When you got to understand those people don't have no power. They don't have no power. We have given them our authority because you believe the lie that they said about you. You believe the lie that they told you that nobody never marry you with five children. You believe the lie that they told you that you black and you ugly. You believe the lie that what somebody said to you and so instead of what we'll tell people they call me black and ugly. They told me I'm broke. They told me I'm an always be in the project instead of you telling people what the word of God say. This is what you got to talk to you. This is what we got to steal away. That's what the old people to say. You got to steal away with the Lord and this is what you got to divorce the lies that people have told about you. You, I'm, The lie is what they said about you. The lie is what they felt about you. You ought to be glad that I'm with you. You ought to be glad that I'm no, 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 no. I don't have to do none of that because I understand God never called me to be at a place to be damaged. And so when you find yourself being damaged, see, we've been so complacent, especially in church. Come on here, help me. Because sometimes at church, we will be damaged and we'll be in relationships. Come on here, because I'm going to talk, and I'm going to actually write a book about it, how sometimes in church, we would tell people they could be in a bad situation and they can be in a bad relationship and we'll keep telling people, pray about it, baby. Fast by fast, baby. Keep on fast. Fa uh, fasting and praying. But you know what God told me? He told me it don't take no 20 years to change nobody. It don't take no 10 years to change nobody. And sometimes people been having people stuck in church because they've been in the wrong relationship because people say we don't want them to leave our church. We don't want them tithes and offering to go away. So they would keep you in a place of bondage to make sure that they got them tithes and offering even though they know that you two was never supposed to be together. You got to begin to understand that when God put a man and woman together, he said the two become one. So when he puts you together, it's going to be for a kingdom purpose. And if it's not for a kingdom purpose, you got to understand that's a satanic agenda. That's what I said. You can be in a satanic agenda for 20 years, 30 years, and 40 years. And so in our mind, we just assume because people been together a long time that that means that God was in it. No, just because of grace and mercy. God will begin to sustain things. But you got to understand that when you begin to open up your eyes and you begin to know self-worth, when you begin to say, I love me, no longer do I want to be damaged. No longer do I want to be hurt. No longer do I want to be somebody trash can. Because see, our culture is so caught up of men calling women bees, women calling men, they ain't no good men. No, we have we know how to curse one another. And that we, have, uh, we think that it's okay. Well, because that's just the way I talk. Just the way I'm keeping the 100. No, you're not keeping the 100. No, you're tearing down. You're tearing down the order of man. You're tearing down the order of woman because we're supposed to build up one another. We're supposed to pray for one another. But then when we tear one another down, this is where you see that we are broken at. This is where you see that we're hurt at because see, now we feel like we're doing something because we tearing somebody down. We're making somebody look bad. We're making them feel some kind of way. No, that means that you are a agent working for Satan because see we're not the church is not supposed to fight up against the church my thumb is not supposed to fight up against my fingers. My hand is not supposed to fight my wrist. No, we're supposed to work together. But because we have unresolved issues in our head, we got different voices of hurt and pain. The only thing that's been put in our brain, you got to understand your brain remembers everything from you being a little baby in your mama womb all the way to your adult life. So your brain records everything that has happened to you. And if you never took the time to put health 
of the information and put the word of God in you, the only thing you know how to do is duplicate what you saw with your eye gates and what you heard with your ear gates. And so a lot of times people are not healthy because the only thing they know how to give you is hurt. They know how to give you pain and they know how to break you. And here it is, you're in relationships and you saying that I want a healthy relationship, but it's impossible for you to have a healthy relationship when the only thing you know how to do is hurt. When the only thing you know how to do is damage me. When the only thing you know how to do is bring me discomfort. So how can you really give me the love of God when you really don't know the love of God? And see, and this is why God is saying my people got to go back. We got to stop thinking that God just wants you to have a house, materialistic things. You got your food. You got the shelter. But here it is. Your inner man is broken. Your inner man is damaged. Your inner man is no good for nobody. This is why relationships and marriages are failing because people fail to do the work to heal themselves before they get in a relationship. I'm going to say that again. We want a relationship, but we don't want to take the time to deal with why are you the way that you are? Why are you a mama and complainer? Why is it that you always call people out their name? How come you, you're such a pessimist? Everything is always negative. How come you always at a place where you're never lifting up, but you're always tearing down? See, these are things that we have gotten so comfortable being broken and we do not recognize that it's where the enemy is using us to curse ourselves and we're cursing other people and as long as you stay like this you are teaching your children how to be damaged you're teaching your children how to be hurt you're teaching your children how to be broken and they're going around trying to duplicate these same cycles yeah they got a nice car a nice house but here it is they jacked up on the inside they liars they manipulators they deceive us they curse people with their words but we got nice stuff. And that's what we see with people. We got nice things, but our insides is dead, like dry bones. And here it is. People don't even recognize when the spirit of God comes in a room because we're so in our flesh. We only know about shouting and dancing, but you don't know when he comes in with his presence. You don't know when he come in and he says, I want to deal with that. You want to know why certain things is on your mind right now? It's because the spirit of the living God want to deal with it. You want to know why he bringing this thing to you while we talking because he said I want to deal with this situation and God been wanting to deal with a lot of things but then yet we don't want to deal with it because we saying God it hurt it's too much no God said but how long how long must you keep on waiting right here he said I got so much in store for you but I can't give it to you because you ain't ready to deal with you he said because you have gotten so comfortable in your broken place he said you have been so broken from the trauma from the abuse that emotionally and mentally and spiritually, we ain't no good for nobody. This is why we know how, we, as, as people, we know how to do sex. Can I tell you, you could be having sex and still broken. You could be having sex and still broken, still damaged, still dealing with hurt, still thinking about somebody else in your mind because you hurt. You got so many women are hurt because people rape them and they having a hard time in their marriage because the church have not told us how to deal with the hurt. And here it is, the woman don't can't have sex with her husband because she still got the rapist in her mind. See, this is what we got to be willing to deal with our issues so that when God blesses you with your spouse, you don't have, you won't be bringing that baggage into your new place. You won't bring it into the new relationship. But this is where you first got to learn to love you because as you're learning to love you, guess what? You're going to attract somebody else who love they self. And so if you love they yourself, they love they self, guess what? Y'all got two whole people. Guess what? And y'all going to be good to one another because you took the time to work on you. And see, and this is where you got to be willing to take the time. Do you know what areas where you're broken at? Do you know what areas at where you don't know how to be a woman at? You know what? In other words, I don't know how to love me. I can't be by myself. This is where you got to learn to get in that word and you got to begin to now divorce what was told about you. What was told that you're bald headed, you're nappy headed, you got some big eyes, you got a big nose. See, you got to deal with those images. You got to begin to sit down and hear what God's words has to say. God, you know what? I forgive those people. You know what? Call out their names. Call them out your soul. Call them out your spirit. When I was in the kindergarten, they called me. They told me I look like olive oil. You know what? You That stuff makes a difference even though you're an adult. But what happened to you in your younger years, it shapes you into the person who 
you are. And if people call you names, and if you did not deal with them unresolved issues, guess what? Them names that they call you back then, they still talking to the 40-year-old if you have not dealt with it. And this is where we got to be willing to say, you know what, God, you know what, I'm bothered by, you know what, in the first grade, you know what, they, they talked about me, they pulled my hair, and you know what, and you know what, and, and Bobby, he's the one that did it, you know what, God, you know what, I choose to forgive Bobby. You know what, because I'm understanding now, Bobby only know what, what he's been taught. He may be used to his daddy talking about his mama, so he came to the school doing the same thing he seen his mama do. No, this is where you got to sit down and not be willing to deal with you, because guess what? It's your job to fix the image how you see you, and fixing your image ain't you putting on no weave. It ain't you putting on no dress. Man, it ain't you putting on no your tight shirt and then showing your muscle. No, it's you dealing with your pain. It's what you told when they told you you ain't got nothing done. No, you got to deal with what this stuff people have said about you because now it makes you feel some kind of way because of what they call you. So now you keep reliving it because you got to understand your brain recorded it. So your brain told you you are what they said about you. And now you got to tell your brain, no, I, I pulled this down. The Bible says in second, um, term, um, Corinthians, the 10th chapter, cast down every imagination, every image, every image that's in your mind. You got to cast it down and you got to tell the devil, you a liar. I divorce you as of today. I will not listen to you. You will not call me that. And you say, God, I forgive so-and-so who said that. And you say, God, you got to take the moment and say, God, you know what? Let the tear run down your face. Be pay attention to the pain that you're feeling as you're hearing what they call you. You're going to feel some tension maybe in your air, your body. And you say, God, I'm giving you permission to heal me. I'm giving you permission to heal me in my heart. I'm giving you permission to heal me in my head. And you say, God, I need you to wash me. I need you to cover me in your blood. Come on, say, God, I need you to restore me back to how you made me. And this is what you got to understand. God want to use your, he want to heal your soul. Your soul is the invisible part of you. Your soul is the part of you that nobody can not see. But you remember when Bible called you that name so you got to begin to say I, I apply the blood to my soul when I was in the second grade and say God I'm believing you to heal me I'm believing you to take the pain away I'm believing you to take the, the thoughts away take the smell away when they rape me God I'm giving you permission to bring the go do you not know the Holy Ghost can go back into the past and he will begin to heal you in these areas and you say God I'm giving you permission to take the pain away even I need you to I call that person who rape me. I call them out of my soul. I break that soul tie. God, I break the residue. Anything that came in with that person, I need you to take it out. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. God, I need you to set me on fire. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to drive it out of me. Drive it out of my soul. Drive it out of my spirit and say, God, I thank you right now. Come on here. Can you walk by faith? You know what? You ain't got to feel no goosebumps. You ain't got to feel no chills. You ain't got to feel no heat. You know what the Bible say? My word is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So you got to understand when you open up your mouth what you don't understand. Angels are being released and they're beginning to perform a surgery while you speaking the word out of your mouth. This is why we got to get healed. This is why we can't keep walking around here hurting people. We can't keep damaging people. We cannot stay in this place because you got more people hurting people in the church than the people People out there in the world that should not be you got people in the church hurting each other because who have dealt with their issues and then when you because you when you're in deliverance you got to have tough skin to be willing to stick it out you got to have tough skin that even though we going back and forth but i'm telling you i'm not gonna give up on you but then yet i'm telling you right here i'm right here yeah you may roll your eyes yeah you may but i'm telling you i'm right here to help you because if you're going to deal with your issues you got to be willing to fight because some of these demons are generational demons they've been in your family for a hundred years so you got to understand you got to have some anointing to stand. You got to have some anointing not to be moved to and fro. Cause you know what it see this right here is bigger than it's bigger than you just falling out. No, this is where you know what you allowing the power of God to deal with you. And you say, God, yeah, that's why I need help at. That's why I need help at with this right here. This is why I need help at and this is where you go on and you ask God, I need you to help me. I need you to strengthen me that I don't give up on me. Because see when you hurt and you're damaged, you'll look 
for somebody else to do what God called you to do. You'll look for somebody else to lay hands on you and God say you're supposed to be laying hands on yourself. Why, do, why, why would God have you to do it? Because he's raising you up. We're in the kingdom age. When you're in the kingdom age, guess what? God is going to use his people. God is going to use the average believer to lay hands and cast out devils. God is going to use you. But then here it is because we're so stuck in the church age. We're looking for the pastor to do it. And we getting mad at the pastor. Not understanding God said, it's the process that I want you. Because I want you to know what it feel like. I want you to know the pain that it took you to go through. I want you to, I want you to know so that you can be able to help somebody else to go through but you wouldn't know that if you didn't go through it and this is where God is saying we got to stop with this this this, this um, popcorn mentality where we thinking that it's gonna come overnight I didn't get like this overnight this is the years of process this is where I had to fast and pray because I had to deal with my thoughts because I was letting my thoughts tell me who I am. Can can you right now? I am not my thoughts. I am not what happened to me, even though I may have got raped. But you know what? But you know what? I'm not raped. You know, even though I may be sick, but I am not sick. Come on here. You got to understand you are not what happened to you. I can go down Brown Avenue, but it don't mean that I'm Brown Avenue. I can go to the Walmart, but it does not mean that I am the Walmart. But we have taken on these things because of the way that we was taught. And the way that we was taught is we did not question how we think. We did not question the thoughts that are in our mind. How do you know that it ain't, it ain't your daddy talking to you when you hear all these negative thoughts about yourself? Your daddy used to call you names. So then when you hear all these other, oh, I'm ugly. No, I can't wear that. Do you not know that that's not you? That's the spirit that came in from your dad. And here it is. It's rooted as a tool that the enemy is using you to keep you defeated. And so since you don't know who it is, the devil wants you to keep thinking that it's you. Because your body is a house. Your body is just waiting on you to speak what you're supposed to be. Because the more that you begin to speak his word, it's the more that you become it. You got to become the word. He don't magically make us the word. We become the word. You got to go through the process so you can become who he called you to be. I didn't just become like this. I had to go through the process. I, I was just like anybody else. Went through hurts and pain. I didn't love myself. Suicidal. God don't nobody love me. I ain't no good. I had to look in the mirror and tell myself because I understood I was hurt and I grew up in the church. And I used to wonder, when is God gonna heal me? When is God gonna deliver me? And I was and I was disappointed, but I did not understand because people were not teaching about it. So I understood I had to put myself around people who were teaching. And that's when I start learning, oh, I got, I got a part I got to play. Oh, I got some things I got to do. Because I had a misunderstanding. I'm up here waiting on God to do it and not understanding. I had to get around the right people so I can have the access to get from God what I need. And so what I'm telling you, sometimes we're around the wrong people. You're around people who can't give you what God is trying to give you. And yet you're being stuck because you're trying to wait on them. And they're not, they're not trying to get to that level. But this is where you got to be willing to say, you know what? I got to get myself together because I need healing in my mind. Yeah, I want a car. Yeah, I want a big house. But the Bible said, I want you to be in good health and I want your soul to prosper. He said, I want you where you'll bear to rest at night. Where you won't have to take 10,000 pills just so you can go to sleep. He said, I want you to have a clean house. Come on here. You, this is where sometimes our houses are so congested because we got so much hurt and pain in us. We can't deal with our hurt and pain. That's why we can't keep a clean house. We can't keep a clean car. Our closet is a mess. We don't want nobody to see it. It's because really what's in your mind is congested and overcrowded and overwhelmed. That's why you see what you see in your life because that's what it's like in your soul. And he's trying to tell us. It's time for you to get healed. I tell people all the time, if you can't be disciplined to keep your house clean, 
keep the dishes clean. It's a discipline. What are you doing? Because you're teaching yourself order. Because that was something that we should have got as little kids. But if we didn't get it as kids, we got to be disciplined and do the order now. We got to be disciplined. I am going to read my Bible because this is what's going to help me. Come on, but you saying you want a relationship. But if your house ain't clean, ladies, your kitchen ain't clean, don't nobody want to come to no dirty house. Don't try to clean up because somebody coming. We should be, it should be clean just because it's clean. Your room should be clean just because it's clean. Even if you got books, I got books and stuff, but I got it stacked up neat where I know what stuff at because where I've been studying at. But this is where you got to understand it got to be order in your life so that you can have order in your mind so you can look and say, you know what, I'm distracted. The prophet ain't got to tell you that you're distracted. The prophet ain't telling you you got to be focused. You know that you got to get focused because you can sit back and say, wait a minute. I got some things disheveled in my house, so I know that's what's going on in my mind. See, you got to be able to stand back and to be able to deal with you. And then, so in other words, so you see some people and you're avoiding them. You got to, why am I avoiding them? See, you got to be willing to ask yourself and say, you know what, what's the real truth why I don't like them? What's the real truth why they get on my nerves? See, you got to be, you got to deal with the internal thing on the inside of you. No, I just don't want to fool with them. Could it be that here it is, they got what you need, but really because you don't want God the way you say you really want God, you just push them people away. No, don't nobody understand me. No, 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 no. Could it be that you just fearing, you're just fearing to get close to people and God put people in your life to help you, but you pushing them back because you so used to being hurt, wounded and broken. You don't know how to be healed. How can God help you? He put the people in your life, but then yet you won't let nobody to come in. I tell people all the time, if God put people in your life, he going to show you if they're doing something wrong, that's going to hurt you. He's going to show you. But other than that, if he put those people in your life to help you let them people help you because you're pushing away your help because you sitting up here around other people some of these people they, they're anointing and stuff but they ain't gonna tell you how to be delivered because sometimes they ain't delivered you got some of these people doing all this stuff and it looks like in ministry they got it going on but they ain't delivered themselves that's why you hear some people they don't talk about deliverance because guess what they ain't messing with the devil and that's why they ain't gonna preach about it because if you're going to do this here, oh, you're going to fight some devils. Oh, because some people are going to be pissed off about what I'm saying. Yeah, I said it. Because you got to understand when you exposing the devil, because see, them stuff where people, you could be standing next to somebody and they could be sending witchcraft at you, but you so sensitive in the realm of the spirit, you say, I just know they did. Here it is. You thought this person loved you, but Holy Spirit will show you when he cleaning and healing your mind. Baby, you'll begin to hear some conversations. You'll begin to feel some things. And here it is. These will be people who you looking at in your face. And these are the very ones who did this stuff to you. But because you hurt, you wounded, and broken, you won't recognize it. And this is where God is saying, who's going to go through the process because you got so many people at our churches. And I, I, I'm going to be honest. People just don't come to the altar and say, you know what? I need to be healed of this rejection. I need to be healed of this unforgiveness. I need to be healed because I'm broken. You know, a lot of times we come because of things, but yet our mind is jacked up. Here it is. We operating in Jezebel. We operating in witchcraft. And I'm watching people. They come to the altar talking about my finances. And I'm like, Really? Really? You got all this going on and you talking about your finances? And see, this is how the enemy want us. He want us so broken that you can't, your mind can't get fixed. Because if your mind can't get fixed, you won't ever hear going. Somebody has to always be telling you what God's saying. God ain't designed for this kind of relationship. He lives in your body, but you got to always hear what I say to know what God's telling you. The devil is a lie. God ain't never meant for it to be like that. He meant for for us, me, to teach you, to teach you how to now become discerning so that when he starts talking to you, you'll know he's talking to you. And so when I'm saying something to you, it will be a confirmation of what he already told you. But when you got some of these people, they looking at the man and woman of God as if they're God. And otherwise, you don't hear nothing from God unless you hear from them something wrong in the relationship. Because if God lives in your body and you always got to hear him talking to another person to get to what he's saying, something is wrong. You still hurt and damaged. It's somewhere there's no he can't flow through yet. 
because you got some demonic spirit is stopping it because you have not dealt with your issues. And my thing is, a lot of leaders, some of, some of them ain't going to push you to deal with your issues. They can care less. And this is why we talk about deliver me from me, because I was in some places and they could care less that I was dealing with issues. Long as they needed me to do ministry. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. I need to get with somebody who's going to show me how to be healed. I need to get with somebody that's going to show me how to heal God. I need to get with somebody that's going to show me that I know how to be what God called me to be. Not just to be anointed for you, but to be anointed for me so I can hear what he's saying. But if you don't deal with the brokenness, as I get ready to close, and we'll pick up next week. You got to deal with the hurt, being damaged, and being broken. Because the goal of the enemy is to get you where you don't love yourself. And for years, I walked around in church and I hated myself. I kept busy, being busy, helping other people because I did not want to deal with myself. It, can I tell you how many people passed by me, laid hands on me? Nobody never ministered that to me. Never. Until I got into a deliverance ministry and that's when they started dealing with my issues. And that's why I love deliverance, because it took somebody bold enough to tell me that I had some issues. It took somebody bold enough to tell me that I'm going to work with you and I'm going to help show you how to get delivered. I love that. Don't love me and you can't help me. Don't love me and you see that I'm up here wounded and uh, uh, I'm broken and I'm fragmented and you ain't said nothing to me. But then yet yeah, you telling me I got a call on my life. Before I get to that call, can you help me? Can you help me where I don't walk around here hurt nobody? Because a lot of times I hurted people because I didn't recognize that I was hurt. And sometimes that's what it's like in our churches. You got hurt people hurting other people. And the people don't want to be healed because healing is not taught. And this is where we got to understand it ain't just about you got kidney failure, back problem, arm problem. No, I'm talking about when you got mind problem, where your emotions sit. No, it's where you've been wounded at, you've been rejected at, you bitter, you got rage, you got frustration, you got disappointment, you got trauma where daddy left, you got the divorce, divorce mom and daddy, mama put you with grandmama, you've been dealing with abandonment, you, you feel like an orphan. See, that stuff got to be dealt with. Because if you don't deal with that stuff, how can I truly help anybody if I have not been dealt with myself? And this is why God is saying, we got to go to this place and say, God, I need you to help me. So I'm going to stop right here. Um, I pray that something that I said was a blessing to you. I pray that God cover you all with the blood of Jesus and that he will begin to awaken you where you've been spiritually asleep and that your prayer is say, God, I need you to heal me. Show me where I'm broken at. Show me where I'm wounded at. And God, give me the grace to fight for me. Give me the grace to fight for my healing. Give me the grace to get in this scripture that I allow you to deal with me so I can become the person that you call and ordain for me to be. And so as I close out today, I pray the blessing of the Lord be upon you all. And I thank you all for coming on the broadcast. I love you too, woman of God. Um, and I see you all next week. Have a beautiful weekend. Love you all.